you know, as bad as it's been and as tragic, you know, as COVID has been for a lot of communities, um, I, I do have a certain level of appreciation for it because I feel like, um, I feel like, yeah, like technology is the future. You know, technology is the way forward in general, right? And with this happening, I think it's given the creatives, the artists, the young people a chance to create, man. It gives us a chance to, you know, it, it kind of levels out the playing the, the playing boards. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like while all the huge corporations are scrambling, trying to figure out what's next, you know, the young cats, the innovators are dropping the next thing. You know, mm -hmm. I was just telling my friend who was in um he's a, a record executive, you know, I was saying that y'all I'm just excited to see what like new artists are born out of this movement. You know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's exciting. You know, I, know. I think it's, it's forced all of us to have to really just dig deep and, 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 and bring our, our talent out, bring our passion out, bring the creativity out. Yeah, I mean, now more than ever, right? And I think one thing that uh, I, I was thinking about earlier is just how like COVID now forces, even if you're like a very like corrupt person, it forces you to have to think about empathy in people's lives, you know, because like people are not going to come to your store or your retail store or whatever. If you're the dude that's like, yeah, we don't no masks. Just come in. you know, da, da, da. So it forces, right. like everybody to rethink. And it really is like a universal, you know, it's <laughs> it's a universal principle that like it doesn't care how, you know, financially displaced you are how you know financially abundant you are how big you are how small you are you know how, whatever yeah, everybody's affected everybody's affected every single body and it like you know we want to bully people then talk about you know we want to bully people all over the world and then the big bully came and took everybody's lunch money <laughs> <laughs> and that's COVID. Took everybody's job yeah it came like you know that scene um uh you know where like ti nunu where he just takes the chain <laughs> and, yo, know, like, all the plans you thought you had, everybody yeah. thought, yo, 2020 is going to be this, 2020 is going to be that. All those plans were shifted. I think it also made us realize that, um, you know, like, nothing is secure, nothing is sure. Like, you got to be always ready for, you know, a shift at all times. But, you know, does it, does it feel to you like... Like, it's just a huge shift. Like, the world has shifted. Like, the way people think and move may have changed forever. Oh, 1,000%. And it just shows us how fragile our economy has really been based off of. And I don't just mean American economies. I mean a lot of, a lot of economies. Right. And by this, I mean that the fragility is not in the quantity. It's in the quality. Right? So you think about uh, the United States, how we overproduce meat. You know, we a year every year we waste one point three trillion tons of wasted food every year. Wow. And so we haven't been building an infrastructure for the micro, only the macro. We wanna right. build rockets and we wanna build and again I'm not throwing shade to anybody, but like we wanna build big, big things that we forget the small things can affect our lives. So when this had happened, it just showed how unprepared we were and how much we didn't think about that. We were so egotistical about building all these te other technologies and even large companies like Apple and Google. They're only recently collaborating to do uh, the contact tracing. You know, that's not a feature okay. that's been in the operating system. It's not something that they've thought about before. And now right. we're scrambling last minute to do it. So um, to your point, bro, I think it really affects the world forever. And it really humbles us and teaches us especially because the young generation like me, I'm 23 and I remember like 9-11, but I was a child. Right. So we never had like a crazy moment like this ever. So we needed to go through something like this to show us like, okay, time to shift gears and what we think we should be creating versus what we should actually be creating because it could change in an instant like that. You know what I mean? Yo, it's so true, man. It's so true. And I think that the people that are able to really adapt the quickest are going to, you know, succeed and reap benefits of it. Because, you know, there's, there's, there's a perception happening, right? You can either, you know, have this whole, I'm um, over COVID, like, you know, this is annoying. I want to go outside and play. Or you can sit there and you can figure out, yo, like, I have this time. Like, when again 
in this lifetime, I'm going to have this opportunity to sit in my house mm. and do what I need to do at home. You know, for me, like, my, um, my travel people told me that this is the longest that I've been in the same city for like, the past <laughs> same, three years. Same. In three years, so I'm like, yo, I'm really out here trapped. So what am I doing? I'm reading more. I'm researching more. I'm writing, you know, things that I wouldn't ever really do. And, you know, after COVID, I don't see myself dropping these habits. I'm going to pick them up. You know, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to continue to read more and continue to write more because I'm seeing just the effects of it, you know. Yeah. But, and I would even say, like, you know, for me, like, being a first generation, like, African Muslim kid, like one thing that I've recently been learning and I've been reading a lot of like different scriptures. And one of them is that, you know, no matter what happens to you, always think about the advantages of something rather than the disadvantages of something. Right. So with COVID, think about the blessing that so many of us would be like, I'm too busy. I'm too this. I'm too that. And we would complain about how we don't have enough time in a day. And now we have all the time in the day. You have all the time in the day. <laughs> think about that blessing, though. Like, that's such a blessing. And it's not like, think about it. Like, I know friends that, like, you know, are, you know, they're, they're not working, but they're still getting paid. I also know a lot of people that lost their jobs. But, right. you know, like, right now, there's, there's literally no excuse for creativity or even learning or whatever it might be. We saw all the industries. We saw the statistics. Agriculture, food, health, all of them spiked and went like this. But technology... It kept going. It's still going. It's still, going. Going. It's still look good. At Amazon. <laughs> like, look at these companies. Like, the tech companies are the ones that are going to thrive and thrive and thrive. And, you know, it's time to start building and building our own IPs and creating our own apps. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, that's the future of where we're going. Well, do you remember, what, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, do you remember? And this is what we're learning. This is what we're learning. Yeah. What's really important? What's really essential? Mm hmm do you remember, um, you know, like, I think it was like almost three years ago. And then we, we sat in uh, in your crib, your old crib. And then we watched like the TED Talk. And then I was okay. like, Ugo, in three years, people are going to go back to the TED Talk and listen to the things that we of were saying. Course, of course. <laughs> and, and, and finally understand that when we talked about ownership, when we talked about building systems, now, now, everybody, you know, one person did an Instagram, like D-Nice did an Instagram live and everybody followed suit. But now everybody complaining about how the platform doesn't allow artists to make money, doesn't da 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 But if, if COVID hadn't happened, you wouldn't be complaining about those things. At all. You see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, you could see no, how people... Not complaint yeah, all. people even shift in their priorities of complaints based off the situation that they're in. And it's so much easier in any situation to blame somebody else than to create something new. Right, it's so much easier to be like Instagram is da 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 da, da or whatever than to be like, you know what? It takes, I'm more, going, it takes way more effort to create something new. Yeah, I'm going to learn how to program. Tech man, for anybody that's even thinking about being in tech, when I was and I'm 23, right? I remember a time where like I used to go to Borders. There was a library called Borders before Barnes and Nobles came, and that's where oh, I would go to. Yeah, and that's where. Yeah, we would initially go there and read. But when I was a kid. When I was like 13, 14, YouTube wasn't what it was right now. YouTube was just uh -oh. like early memes. There wasn't no programming tutorials. Right now, not only is the resources or are the resources so easy to learn, but there's so much new languages. Flutter, that is a programming language that Google has created that allows you to basically uh, code once and deploy it to all of your devices. Facebook React is another computer language that allows you to basically just code once and apply it to all of your devices. So you don't have to learn how to build for iOS, build for Android and build for this. Like it's so easy in terms of like access to it. But yes, it's hard. Yeah, if you have a, if you have an iPhone and you yeah. have Wi-Fi, the knowledge is there. You know, um, there's even, have you seen the classes at Harvard? They're giving them the free classes. Free classes. So you guys, yo, you know you can go to Harvard, y'all. Y'all can get Harvard certificates right now. And I don't know how long this person will be there, but if you go to Harvard on um, the website, there's a there's a certain program where you can take like twelve week courses, mm -hmm. four week courses, and, and there's there's a lot of dynamic different um di different certificates like computer science programming. There's, you can study some. You can study Shakespeare, study writing. I just think that yo, the knowledge is power. You know, yeah, and that's it's free. 
that's always we we haven't really had the access to like we have now like knowledge is free you know like you can't rely, rely on your schools to teach you everything you know yeah. there's a lot of resources again youtube you can learn you can learn how to almost do anything and and, and learn how to really like finesse the game right learn and apply it in your own way these people are giving you hunt classes that used to be hundreds of dollars a year they're giving it to you for free thousands. go learn it go thousands. learn it <laughs> yeah yeah thousands go Just learn it and go. in the summer <laughs> that would have cost you eight thousand dollars yeah now go learn and, that and get that for free right now and <laughs> once you learn no one can take that knowledge from you and because uh it's so powerful they know what they're doing they're training a new generation of people to be able to develop and make more money for them right but if you're if you're smart enough to uh be able to learn and really be the spook who sat by the door and learn about the technologies and learn about the systems and learn about the print whatever it is whether you're learning the actual intricacies of how the systems work um use that for example that's what i do like you know um i was t telling people like last time that you know i have a partnership with facebook and I, I, I work hand in hand with Facebook now. I'm no longer just a consultant. And when I create things, I own every single line of code that I write. I own every single, you know, design that I create. And they can choose to buy that, but I deliver a product and I own everything on my wow. own. And ev whoever is watching this can That's do that major. same thing. That's go amazing. use these, yeah, like go use these apps. Go use Instagram, go use YouTube. Find the things that you think can be better and reach out to the companies and say, hey, I, I have an idea or I've created. That's how I started off. I would like reach out. That's how I had those meetings with Uber. I would reach out to companies and be like, yo, I got this idea for this and this and that. And then they would like, fuck with it. You know what I mean? So I think like in that same capacity, finesse the game. And by that, I don't mean do fraud. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, be able to take your skill sets, understand that you have something so rare. Shout out to our boy, our boy Chris that just joined the chat. <laughs> yo, Chris. What's the good, bro, bro? <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's so many skill sets that you can learn how to finesse the game and make it work for you. Yo, so, so, so true. So true. And again, I can't stress how much, how much time is of the essence right now. You know, I don't know. I don't know, um, again, when we'll have this kind of time to ourselves to create and develop. Once they say that, oh, the world is open again, quote unquote, you know, I think it's going to get overwhelming again very quick, you know? So whatever ideas you have, you know, if it's about writing, it's about creating, whatever it is, just do it. You know, take those risks. Like you said, like, you have to put yourself out there. You know, you have to reach out to Google and Uber you know, like, y'all can just get found. Like, the days of just being found in the streets are over. Like, they created this World Wide Web, you know, mm. as a tool for us to connect, you know. And it's our, you know, it's our advantage as young entrepreneurs, young developers, youths to take advantage of it. Who goes on to Steve Jobs? Y'all better listen. Y'all better listen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, bro, I will say this, too, and I want to ask you a question, but I, uh, not but and... I think it's also important for us to talk about how, like, you know, think about the casualties. Think about the number of people that have, have, have passed away during this COVID. It's enough to be the casualties of a, of a war, like the people that would in Vietnam War or World War, like the people that would die. So we're it's a war on COVID, if you really think about it. But you look at World War One, you look at World War Two, you look at Nam, the design ethos and the technology. You think about like Ford, General Motors all these companies being established after several wars and creating innovation right we realize that like we're about to see the greatest companies come out of this of all time the last of time we had this time. was you like know, the dot-com boom in the early 2000s i believe there's so much you know you know it's funny this is this is it's historic you know every time there's great tragedy comes great triumph right it goes down to even down to like our ancestors. Um, at the time, go ahead. That <laughs> might be Steve Jobs calling. One sec, bro. Yo, OG. Hey, I'm on a. Uh, I'm on Instagram Live. I'm gonna hit you back. All right. All right. <laughs> Pardon. Oh, bro. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, I was saying, you know, at, at the time when the bubonic plague was happening in the 1400s, right? That was the same time when Africa rose to the highest point. You know that Mansa Musa, his, his pilgrimage was happening at the same time as the plague? 
Bonnie mm -hmm. Drake, like we rose the, the richest man in Africa of all time, richest man in the world, gained all his wealth at the time when Europe was in, in tragedy, you know what I'm saying? And he was able to obviously, again, navigate and finesse and create. But again, it's like, yo, through this circumstance, it's, it's like you said, it's gonna be a lot of empires, a lot of huge things rising. And you wanna be part of that. You know, you yeah, no, 100%. Part of and part of yeah, somebody had mentioned something that I think it's important that I uh, update. It's, yeah, it's not casualties, it's deaths. Like, people are dying. It's not just about people being injured, it's about people being dying. So, uh, shout out to, uh, uh, shout out to Sarah um, for pointing that out. Thank you. And so, I wanted to ask you a question, bro. As somebody that's well versed in this space, in, in, in fashion, you're an icon. I mean, you've worked with some of the largest people and stood by some of the greatest, you know, people in this space. Where do you think fashion is going? Um, or where do you think fashion, do you think fashion will survive as the way we know it in today's time? Or do you think like, you know, how we went from like neo-futurism and all those things, do you think we're gonna start seeing like fashion shows being like, uh, uh, for example, like, uh, uh, sanitary seasons, like season one, <laughs> sanitary, just season two. Is it, are I mean, we going to start seeing more of that? Honestly, I think what it's done, it's, um, it's, it's breaking the fashion industry apart, right? It's kind of it's kind of ripped it apart. Brands like Saint Laurent um, has pulled out of doing fashion weeks until further notice. Like there's a lot of things that are going on where these huge brands are confused. Neiman Marcus is closing down like a, a huge department store draw closing down. So what's happening is these brands are having to, one, downsize on their production, downsize on their companies, and also think of different ways to tap into the youth. You can't have huge fashion shows anymore. Like you can't have huge productions and fashion anymore. And it's like, that's not even cool anymore. You know, like we said, like, it's about, it's about the new age of everything. Like right now, I assure you, um, Diplo, uh, Calvin Harris, and Steve Aoki all wish they were D nice right now. Oh they yeah, wish, yeah. They all wish they <laughs> real quick nice did right now. And what he did, it wasn't about him having the most, like the biggest money or the biggest investor or the hugest team. He was simply innovative. He thought of the best idea and he won big. So I think that's where fashion is going. He in that space it's about it's about thinking how can we connect with the most people at the most time and also downsize i don't think that people are over here trying to spend thousands of dollars on clothes anymore i think what the quarantine has forced us to do is get comfortable wearing comfortable ass clothes all the time you know what i'm saying like I'm so happy to be comfortable. I've, I've always been, but I think... That yeah, you've always been so chill. <laughs> wearing, wearing the same, wearing, wearing, you know, the same vibes. Maybe you realize you don't need a million clothes all the time. Like, you don't have to wear all the seasons and shop for every season all the time. Like, you actually do what you have. Somebody was just like, to go where? <laughs> it's like, where you, you know going? Where you your living so, room? You know, and I think, so, go ahead. Um, To that point, big bro, like, you know, and I, I remember us talking about this, uh, I think like three years ago. And we were just talking about, man, we've known each other for a long time. We were talking about how like, we were talking and I was like, man, big bro, like I'm, I'm not only concerned about fashion, but I'm more concerned with apparel, right? Because apparel is any garment that goes on your body. Fashion is about taste, it's about curation, it's about a specific. And I think that's what we're about to see now. Yeah, like, it's, we're gonna go, yeah, we're gonna go back to essentialism. And I think like, you know, um, like even what Jerry essentials, right? Like essentialism is going to be at a that's, high peak. That's that's the next. That's, that's the new way of fashion. Essentialism is sustainable clothing. Yeah, and the way brands do this is by inter and for any fashion brand in in this stream, I think it's important for people to understand that. You know, if you look at Apple over the years, they went from big ass Apple logo on their devices to now with the new iPhone, it's not even going to say iPhone on the back, it's just gonna be like Apple. You know, it's not gonna oh, even say, hey. yeah, they're not even gonna like, you know, put, uh, sorry, they're not gonna put Apple anymore. They're just gonna put iPhone. And okay. I think that's what brands are also going to start realizing that it's not about the fur. It's not about, you know, this, I mean, this is like custom my brand, right? But it's not about like the stitching and the patterns and all of this. It's just about 
is our brand the apple is our brand the ability for us to just put balenciaga on something and then people will buy it just because like supreme you know what i mean do we have that effect or we, do we not have that effect and i think that's what's going to change uh brands because we're not going to be able to be able to produce as much content anymore people aren't going to buy it as much anymore and it might be that 15 dollars. that's why i'm so happy that in the scheme of everything everything's happening because we're going to democratize accessibility to hype you know what i mean it's going to be a 15 dollar balenciaga shirt i'm telling you there's going to be a 15 dollar balenciaga shirt and it's going to be so <laughs> and everyone's going to have it and they're very and they're very happy yeah and they are very happy What's the and I remember, about, um, about a t-shirt now. What's the I remember, you know, uh, when I was, when I was uh, working with Yeezy and I was working with Kanye, one of the conversations I had with him about was like democratizing it. And cause Kanye was, he was fixated on like, I want to be the iPhone. I want to be, I want Yeezy to be the iPhone. And I was like, the only way you're going to be the iPhone is if you democratize and then you realize that you can have one product and make that one product in a billion colors. And that's initially wow. how Apple was doing it. One product in all these limited edition product red all these different yeah i almost just felt yeah, body project things so i think in the same way like fashion is going to evolve to that level where you know brands are going to have to assume the responsibility of of the logo and the the, the brand that they bear rather than the quality of material that they that they think you know people actually care about you know well, i never thought of it that way this is why you're. This is why you're a genius, isn't it? <laughs> oh no, 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 never, never, never. That's all God. Bro. That's really all God. Yo, that is so freaking true. That's that's why brands like Rick Owens, like, have been have been ahead of this. Like you oh, said. I saw it, bro. Ooh, What's look, up? I, I saw it. I remember a week after COVID, I was on Complex. I was on Heist Nobody, and I was seeing all these fashion brands all of a sudden making masks. And everybody was like, oh, this is dope, this is dope, this is dope. And I was like, oh, yeah. That's They're starting true. to figure it out. It's so and, true, though. And that Ugo, do you, know, do you know why they, they started making masks? Why? It's not for the reason that you think. It's not so they could help people. It's not so da, 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 da. It's not even so they could make more money. You know why they started making masks? Why? Because there was a decree in most places that said only essential businesses can stay open. But if I make masks, I'm considered an essential business and, and I, I can, can stay open. <laughs> and continue spelling. Yo. That's so funny. So foul. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the world you live in. It's like we can't expect anybody to care about us. You know? We can't expect anybody to protect us and to give us all the information. This so, is why you got to do your own research. Absolutely, you know bro. And somebody, had, I'm going to bring, I'm like actively looking at the you know, like the, the, uh, the, uh, you know, comments to keep this engaging. Um, and somebody had mentioned something that I think is important for us being, especially African, right? Somebody has said, not only, you know, where is fashion going? That's one thing, but where do you think the influence of African culture or design will play an integral part in this next evolution of where fashion is going? And you've been doing this for a while. Like, one thing I've always respected about you is you're around the OGs, you're around the Naomi Campbells, you're around like all these amazing people, you know, but you also remember that the youth are also important. You're, you're around all the, like the, the youth, the Lagos in Nigeria. When I was in Nigeria, you were like, you have to meet this person, you have to meet this person. You're, you're so connected. Yep. So where do you think the role of just African youth or more importantly, Africa as a continent is going to play in the next, you know, five years or 10 years because of COVID? Because one thing I've noticed is like, in Ghana, we have a bag called the Ghana Must Go Bag. It's a dollar. It's a one CD. It's a bag that can just open and you can put in Hausa, because I, you know, we're Hausa, I, we call it Kitaku, and yep. you can put so many things into it. And then you see like Louis Vuitton. And now you can put a whole house in there. And you a whole house in there. Yeah, and yeah, you can fit a whole house in there. And Louis Vuitton <laughs> made that and sold it for like a thousand dollars, right? Wow. So that's, that's something I personally yeah. realized. But where do you think the future of fashion is going from the perspective of? Uh, uh, just African culture or black culture like being a, a, a pivotal thing in it? I truly believe uh, more than ever that people now are craving authenticity. Mm. You know, people are craving the reality. You know, we're, we're as an audience, as a consumer, we're so much harder to fool. We know when things are fake. We know when things are copied. We know when it's borrowed. And people are quickly causing <laughs> doubt now. I think yeah. with that being said, like 
people are realizing that, yo, a lot of cool things <clears throat> come from Africa. A lot of the silhouettes, a lot of the colors, a lot of the prints that we like come from Africa. And, you know, with that, it's like, first you realize, then you have, then you have that access to it, and then you start consuming it. So for me, I think it's super important for, you know, people like us to create that bridge, right? So when people have this, you know, this interest in Africa, they have a way to connect and a way to really go there. You know, I know, you know, for me, I'm working on a lot of interesting things, you know, to create that bridge of storytelling in film and television and TV. I think that we are going, we're in a place where you're the African country and the world is going to collide and finally understand each other. You know, there's mm. always been a disconnect where people felt like, you know, Africa is unattainable. Africa is a place where we have no access to, we don't understand them. But now with the internet, with TV, with, with visual, we realize, yo, like, this is actually, we're the same people. You know, we actually do connect. We speak the same languages. It's actually understanding. So I think that gap being bridged, like Tracy. Oh, that's our brother right there. Yo, it's so, it's so, so important. That's what's happening right now. Yeah, and I'm going to say one thing, too. Like, I remember in, in three, literally three years ago, around November, you know, I was talking to T Mills. And we got into this conversation. And then I was so only fixed. I was like, I want to help black people and justice and da 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 and then he like told me and, 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 and instilled the sense of truly democratization for everybody to me. You know what I mean? If right. you only like, yes, like it's important for us to help our people. But when you just right. start, when you just start with that and you just only focus on that, what differentiates you than the oppressor? Or what differentiates you from, because then when that becomes, because it's unpopular, right? When you help right. a specific people, it's unpopular till it gets popular. And then right. you're favoriting them over everybody else. So shout out to T Mills, you know, at Complex Town like three That's years awesome. ago, put me out to that. Yeah. At, at, the, at the end of the day, I think equality is just so important. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it's something, it's, it's even, it's sad that we have to even use that word that people aren't even equal. That's what it comes down to. You know, we're not asking, we're not saying we're better than anybody. We're not trying to ask for more than anybody else has, but it's just like, to be able to have an opportunity to really be understood and to have our story be shared. I think the biggest issue, honestly, where this all stems from is the, the ideology, the perception, and the image that people have of Africa. And that stems down to the lack of stories, the lack of visuals, the lack of understanding. And, you know, there's been things like, you know, from Black Panther or whatever's happening, but I really feel like we're in the age of, again that that bridge being 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 crossed where there's understanding as soon as i feel like as soon as we understand that you know black people especially we're all one of the same people like it's going to be a dynamic like electric yeah. cosmic boom and if i can uh uh you know uh I, if i could even add something to that i think please the the dope thing about this culture um, that we, we call culture, right? Is we live in an era that technology allows us to document in ways that we've never done. You think about the girl that created the renegade dance and then they stole it. Oh, they came for that girl so fast, you know? And then next thing you know, she's like, you know, opening the game up with her dance. Or you think about like, you know, the, the kids that would create these dances that Fortnite would like appropriate. Oh, and they came for them quick. We have that power of unity, but I think Unity without documentation, to me, in this generation, is kind of almost like worthless. Pointless. If you're not, do it's pointless. pointless. If you're uni if you're not uniting and you're not documenting it, you know, document, it never happened. It never happened. It literally it never and, happened. And, and I know people go like, "Well, if you don't post it on social media, it didn't happen." We're not saying that. We're saying if you didn't document it, it never happened. You can archive everything. We need to start right. a publish. Take yeah, like an African collective videos. consciousness. So we don't just go like, because I hear so many people say all the time, and sometimes we do have like the proof, but a lot of times people go like, they stole this from this culture, they stole this from this culture, and then it's like, we just have a reference image or something. But in the same way that I feel like for me, last year I was talking about like this new equation, because I love math, in math, I realized there were so many equations, right? You learn about home, you learn about jewels, you learn about all these different things, but how many of those equations were black owned or black created 
And so I was like, oh, what if we created a new formula to teach kids the importance of intellectual property? And so we all love, I was like, we all love hip hop, right? So what if we made hip hop an equation and said hip equals hop? The higher your intellectual property, the higher your outputted product, the more you can make. And all these companies do it. So when uh, whoever, Louis or whoever it says, when they come out and say this company stole our shit, they don't just pull up a picture. They pull up a patent. They pull up a trademark. And that's, that's what exactly. we need to do more. We need to start trademarking and thinking about problem. intellectual property. So I'm, I'm with you on that, bro. Bro, bro so important. Saying, we got to we gotta, we gotta create building site. So, so the other day, um, you know, I'm doing that film. Um, I'm producing my first movie right now. Oh, wow. We're in pre-production. In pre you know, it's going way beyond my wildest dreams and you know i got i got a sad card if y'all need <laughs> oh bro you already there you know i need i need all that i need i need all the tech i need all the tech new age waves in the film but yeah i, I decided to turn the film into a book and um and write the book and and publish it out first because i just think i just understand the importance of this documenting and releasing yeah like in films and literature, like through all sorts, is important for all of us. So that's what you said. Like the, the the biggest thing for us, like the biggest thing, the biggest lack that we have right now is the lack of understanding on, you know, again our history. You know, we can you can go to Greece and go to Barcelona and go to France and you see all their history and all their books documented all over the place. You know, I think it's important for our future and for our you know, generations to know that we came here, we killed it, like we did it, you know, like the best athletes and the best technology people in tech, the best people in fashion, like we need to tell our own stories and make sure it's written properly. So absolutely, bro. I'm, I'm posting this. Um, I, I misspelled this. Let me do it again. But yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think about like a conversation that we had, um, high intellectual property, uh, one second. That equation right there, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, for people to life right there. Production and then so it's hip. Uh, equals top and big bro. I think you know one of the things that um, we had talked about was this notion of like in Yoruba culture and you know uh like african culture and house culture and we're originally like my family's originally from like no, no and you went to you know you went to kano that's like where my family's from my and growing, <laughs> Africa. right my and i place. and um you know growing up my mom just made us like always remember um let me pin the comment yeah but she made us remember that you know your your culture is so valuable and Growing up, we didn't really have like heirlooms, right? We didn't inherit like whatever it might be, but understanding that like, man, between Kente Claw, like I want to see a Pantone book. I, I mean, we're working on it with Pantone right now, but like we wanted to see a Pantone book with, with the colors of different variations of Kente cloth in like, you know, whether it's a Ghana culture, Yoruba culture, West oh, Ethi yeah. Ethiopian culture, you oh. know, like, uh, like all of these things. It's, it's so, so, so important. Um, so I think like Walid, what's up, brother? My brother from Kano, Walid is in here. Hey, it's lit. Those are those are in house of to be like Mutani and like those are my peoples. Hey. So I'm so happy, bro. But yeah, when you went to Kano, I was like, yo, I, I low key was like, man, I never like am in a position where I see somebody somewhere that I'm like, I want to be there. But when I saw that, man, you had the gut up and everything. I was like, oh man, oh. he chilling. Bro, we're that's chilling. Uh, we're, you know we're going together, right? Oh no, we're going. We have we're to. Going like, together. The power that in that, place, bro. That place is mind blowing. Like they live lives like their moors in the 1600s. Like yeah. uh, everybody got a horse like it's a dog. Imagine a horse is like a lifestyle animal. <laughs> like evening rides in the sunset. I've never seen flyer people the respect i love islamic culture so much like i love just like just the 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 the, the 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 religion and just like the way of life the way they treat people the food yo kano's my favorite right now i haven't been to all the african um countries i'm missing a lot but i know so far 
you know, I love that reason. So Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think too, like, um, I remember when I was a kid, my mom, um, when we came home, because she knew we lived in a country that was like pretty much 90% English, right? Anywhere. But well, the moment I walked in the door, the moment you come inside, right, you're speaking Hausa because you're not forgetting that. And when I see you with your friends, I'm going to speak Hausa to you. I'm going to speak our languages to you so you don't, you know, or you're not in a position of like being afraid to be you or thinking that being you is, is bad or whatever it might be. And with that in my, in my blood, in my veins, I just knew like, oh, I was going to do something like insanely unique in this world because I understood the value of the duality of both of my heritages. When Nipsey and I first started working in 2017, when we got in the studio and started talking, well, that was the first thing that came up. He was like, I'm Eritrean American. I have, wow. a, I have a, uh, uh, he said, I have a, I have a, like a commitment and a covenant to both of my heritages. And I felt the same way being like Ghanaian American, right? That's it's important. important yeah. And I know you, that's one of the things that we talked about when we very first met. It's so important that we guide the world, like to understanding the, there's just so much infiniteness of, things that can be applied like one of the things that we're working on right now is me being muslim i've been like yo there's so many things that you can really read, read in the quran and it talk about like the you know light uh the light uh the light coherence in olive oil it talks about the chromosomes of bees before wow. modern science knew about it but i was like man innovation has stopped so in in computing in classical computing when you're coding it's a whole bunch of zeros and ones but the zeros and ones have been translated from a Latin language, which is English. So the letter A has like zero one zero zero one zero. Like it's a seven digit code that gives you, um, sorry, eight digit code that gives you that specific sequence of that text. And so one bit has this sequence of, uh, of, uh, of numbers that generate one code and eight bits create one byte. And then one, then you go from you go from byte to megabyte, then gigabyte, then you know, then so on and so forth. But I was like, oh, I want to create, I want to recreate binary language using like the letters of Arabic for the same thing, you know? Wow. Because it's like it, there's so much things that people don't even understand about Islam, and it's not about like oh, just like how could you not believe or whatever. But for, even scientifically, you know, like. Me, my belief in like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam like he god came to him and said speak but he couldn't speak he didn't he wasn't he wasn't a writer he couldn't speak he wasn't he never went to school but god basically downloaded sound waves to his brain and you can prove it because of binary every single letter like the first word, word that was said to him was kul and in arabic kul means say right so it's kaf and lam. Those are two letters in the alphabet. So kaf is basically K and lam is L. So those are two letters. And each of those has uh, eight bits in each because, you know, they're two separate letters. So that's wow. 16 that's bits. Right. And so you can learn about how, like, this whole book at most is, like, one megabyte. Wow. <laughs> that shows the, like, we're just programmed to even just, like, learning the wrong way. Because I'm sure, I'm sure, like, in Japan or Hong Kong, when they're... When they're when they're building, they're sitting, they're they're coding using like Chinese letters. Sorry, <laughs> by the way, I just went on a whole tangent. Everybody in here is like, "What were you talking about?" But I was just understanding from the perspective of like, you know, uh, yeah. I mean that that was a whole thing that we're working on, and you know, we yeah. But like, it's so important that these connections are drawn with our cultures. It's so important that like in Yoruba culture and Hausa culture. Habisha culture, what, no matter what your richer in culture, anywhere in Africa you are, anywhere in the world, integrate your culture into contributing to what technology could look like instead of just change, like, change again. Yeah, instead of just being on a panel talking about you know diversity in tech. What does that mean? Technology is only at the beginning stages. Even fashion is at the beginning stages. So when we get up and we're like, we need more diversity from what? Like there. You are the diversity, you know, when you think Creative. that, yeah, Creative. you have to create oh. it. <laughs> like, like we're, we're, again, imagine we're in a place where it's equal playing grounds. We're starting, we're starting from fresh, you know, that's the exciting part about yeah. this post-COVID world is you're really starting from fresh. 
technology, you're creating new waves. So yeah. we can sit there and complain about what's not happening right, or you can sit there and create what should happen right. Yeah, and it's so important, big bro, that you know we're at the forefront of these conversations from the youth. You know what I mean? It's right. so important. Every major, they say like, you know, you hear this saying a lot, like uh, every great civilization was conquered from the inside, right? Yeah. But I would also say that every great civilization, uh, uh, you know, uh, was scaled from the youth. Every, you look at every great culture, you look at every single culture, it was, it's always been like the youth that have like pioneered and mm -hmm. fought and been like, we ain't doing this no more. The you know what I mean? <laughs> time for us to get, take our power back. Yeah, it's, it really is. We and the power the of it. We influence the culture. We influence the yeah. music. We influence what's hot. Even uh, what's when you think of like um, how people say things like, um, yeah, the youth are just driven around like, this is what we want. We want to show this. We're taking everything back and we're exposing from even being lost. There was a time where like, you know, Man, in Africa, they still do FGM, female genital mutilation. You know what I mean? And it takes, like, people wow. that escape or leave a specific thing and come back with wisdom to be able to change these things. So I think, like, we're definitely on the same page. And I know we could talk about that, like, forever. But do you think we should take questions? Or do, do you think there was something that – or were you – was there a specific question that you think we should address too? Yeah, I think I think we covered a lot of things. Um, let's let's leave the flow open. I think I'm not sure if my thing is frozen, but I'm not seeing the thing anymore. Oh, okay. So um, you, you, you did I pull it up? Journey. Okay, let me look. Um, yo, you gotta pull up to the crib though. Yo, I'm put, bro. Like, there's, you, there's, come there's on now. Lot, there's a lot going on. We gotta catch up on. I'm gonna have to like drive up there tonight. Hey, like, uh, wait, but you 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 moved right? No, I'm still here. I was supposed to move, but then, you Did know. Did they fix the roads? Because, oh, <laughs> you know, you'd be like, you know, no, outside. You'd be driving through those mountains. Yeah, know? yeah. We're not going to say too much. You <laughs> know, we mountains. revealing where you live and stuff like that. I live, in the, I live in the most trippiest place in the hills. Yeah, it's dope, care. though, you know. Like, okay, it's, it's insane. insane. But, um, um, yeah, I'm going to be here for another, like, two months. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm pulling up, like, definitely this weekend. We have a question. Can you see it or no? No. Okay, the question is, do you know any fashion districts in Africa or any efforts, except, example, XYZ Lagos, um, and what can you give on, you know, um, uh, on this? Um, example, XYZ Lagos, is that like a place in Lagos? Oh, no, 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 that was the question. Fashion districts in Africa, there, there are a lot. I mean, there's a lot of different cities in Africa that are very, that are pushing through and prominent and making waves in fashion. Um, Accra and Ghana is one of them. You know, if you are in Africa and you want to take your um, your fashion more seriously, I'll recommend going to one of these places. Accra, um, Senegal. Hey. Senegal fashion, the fashion scene there is booming. Like, they have um, really dope um, brands like Tongoro Studios. Um, where else? South Africa. They're, um, Johannesburg is another fashion capital. They have really great fashion weeks. They launch a lot of supermodels there. And um, yeah, of course, Lagos. Lagos is right now, it's the fashion capital yeah. of Africa. Daily Paper, Kigali, Orange, Daily Culture, Paper. Lagos. Um, Daily people are mentioning a lot. Yo, there are um, so, um, African brands, so even outside the continent, like Daily the Paper, market. Orange Culture. Um, yeah, the list goes on. You know, I'll just like um, uh, go, on one, go on one of the pages, like Daily Paper. And from there, you can just like unravel all yeah. the brands. And in Ghana too, like Osu, you know what I mean? And like, you know, what used to be like old cantonments, like you go out there. I remember like before, you know, when I would go to Ghana when I was a kid, like Circle, you know, it used to be called Circle. That was the area where like, bro, you oh, everyone, yeah. that, that was like the, the, the metropolitan shop. Yeah, yeah. And then they cleaned it up, you know, because it's like. You used to get like fake bags from there. Like, it was like. Yeah. Yo, I would be seeing like Gucci X. <laughs> Louis Vuitton X. Exactly. Supreme. <laughs> you know, like, exactly. There. There. <laughs> you know where I'm excited to also uh, go to? I'm excited to go to, you know, like East Africa and, and more specifically Sudan because there's so much culture there, bro. And when I think about um, like uh, not just Yemen, but like um, uh, like Yemen. Nubian, Nubian culture, Yemen, like yep, the, yep. 
you know, before, like, Egyptians are, like, you know, like, recognized for a lot, but right there's there. pyramids there, bro. They came from Sudan. We got to go, yo. We got to go. Here we got to go today. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I low-key always forget. Like, yeah, yeah my, my friend Roseanne, she's a really dope um, African historian, but she's from Sudan, and she's, like, the encyclopedia. Like, yeah, I would Africa love that. And Mali, too. Mali's super dope. You know, that's where, like, where Timbuktu was. The first university in the world was Mali, where all the scholars from all over the world, from China, India, Europe, used to come to Mali to study and learn there. So, while we're, I was I, just going to say, while, while we're on the topic of that, um, I think I, I'll go ahead and ask a question, and then we can both answer. What do you think the importance of traveling is in creation of innovation, right? When you're creating, when you're in a creative space, when you're thinking of creating a new fashion line or whatever, what's, would you reference a lot of, you know, when you create something new, are you studying from different cultures and putting those and meshing those into one? Or are you able to, you know, uh, 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 create by your subjective perception of like what you've been exposed to when you travel? Um, man, I have to say that I owe uh, like 90% of, 90, 95% of my inspiration and um and my ideas in the way in the way I create to, to my traveling, to where I've been, to places and cultures, you know, obviously, like, you know, you have to understand how your ideas apply at other places to know if it's really good or not. Mm. And to that point, I would add that um, I think it's important that, like, you know, uh, the thing is, now we live in a global village, right? And you can go into a VR, you could visit anywhere without being there, but nothing will ever replace physically being there. No matter what technology is built, nothing is like being there. Like, when you step foot in another country, you know, be it India or Asia or Africa, there's definitely the energy. You know, it's, it's sort of the feeling of being submerged, surrounded by people who aren't like you. You know, it, it makes you understand life in a, in a much more bigger way. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would say that if a lot more Americans had passports and traveled, America would be a better place. Mm. America would be a lot better place if mm. if people were more exposed to other cultures and understood that those, you know. Mm. You know, and I think, um, you know, uh, for me, I'm, I, I have to agree with you. And a lot of what I create comes from the duality of not only my heritage as being like Ghanaian American, but also even growing up as a first generation, like, Muslim kid too, you know what I mean? Right. There's been so many inspirations. Like, I used to like just, you know, when, how I first actually got uh, into uh, graphic design is before I came across the Fibonacci triangle and all these things, you know, like the uh, the sign at the top of mosques, like the half moon. Yep. Like I would learn about how to draw that through a circle blah, 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 and that's how I got into proportions. And oh, so I think like, crazy. as I, when I travel, I'm not necessarily, like, when I went to, for example, like, Iceland or Dubai, I'm not really concerned about their design aesthetics. I'm concerned about the values that led to those things. Because for as long as you keep that, you can learn anything from any culture. Learn about their values. Don't just learn about, like, you know, if, like, for example, like, if I went and learned about tamales, for example, right? Why were they created? What was the value in these spices being chosen over these things or these things? And you learn the values. That's how you really change things. It's not really about, oh, I'm just going to learn this exact recipe. Or, or the aesthetic. Or the yeah, or the aesthetic. You go for the aesthetic. No, yeah. you go for the, that, that's, that's such a, a, a great way of putting it. Yeah. It's so true. Because, I mean, like, when you, you can travel and you can travel on vacation and go and do your thing, or you can go and really submerge yourself with the people. I always like to go into the into the city, like take me where people don't go. 
take me to the take me to the to the rural parts of it where y'all are scared to go because that's where you get to really see the the heart of the city. You know, if you go if you're traveling, you spend time at the hotel and you go to a restaurant and you leave and it's like, all right, now go yeah. into the go go do some groundwork and go into yeah. like like London, for example, I learned so much and I spent a lot of time in East London, like where they would call the hood. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had the most fun there. You know, I I made the I made the closest friend out to really understand what London was about by being with the people, you know. So yeah. it's so And cool. I would say this too, I think we're like probably like halfway, you know, through this, but I think it's important for people to ask more questions because there's not a lot of questions in here. People are asking them in the in the uh, comments, but if the, we could have it in the question section so we can add more. Um, but to that point, Ugo, um, you know, what do you think has been the shortcoming of whether fashion, technology, whatever it is, what do you think the shortcoming is as it relates to the world not being able to see the value of the, the value of the importance of heritage? And by that, I mean, you know, why is it important for Africans to have a say in how media is consumed or how fashion is consumed or how technology is important? Why is it important for, you know, Latinx people to have a say? Why is it important for Asian? Why is, it, why is representation important from the perspective of not consuming, but creating in these various industries? Okay, um, there's this quote that I'm about to I'm about to mess up the air in my life. I'm about to butcher this quote, but you probably know what the quote is. You know that quote that goes like um um until you hear the lion's story, it'll always benefit the hunter. Mm -hmm. How does it really go? No, I mean you that was it. That's it, know? right? Okay. So that's what I feel. I feel like as a people, no matter who you are, where you're from, you know. Um, if you allow somebody else to write your story, it'll never be correct. Ever. It'll never be correct. Like, it's like, imagine someone who, imagine somebody who you meet, like, your your last year of living, telling your entire life story. Like, <laughs> can they really do that? Plus, like, they'll be lazy. Like, I, they, they might, they'll try it, but it's not going to be the life story that you would tell or how yeah. you would tell it. So it's like, that's the importance of everybody using their voice, telling their own stories, sharing mm -hmm. their experiences, because that's what's lacking. You know, that's the, the only reason why um, the average 11-year-old um, in Detroit may never want to go to Africa or have, or, or have Africa in the back of their mind as their last option to ever go to is only because there's nothing that that little boy can see on TV or in film that can make them want to go to Africa. So Especially in the early 70s, right? We used to see all these, like, you can feed a child for $5. Even till now, even till my, now. If my you, friend. If you, if you watch a Disney movie in Africa right now, I don't want to go there. It's not, it's not, a, it's, it's not fun. It's not exciting. Mm -hmm. Like, the only movie they, they made about Africa that was, like, really opulent, you wanted to go, was, like, um, coming to America, coming to or like, or or the Black Panther, Zamunda. Or, that was a made-up place. place. So it's like, where's the real place that that kid may want to go to? It's like, you know, we have to, but it's up to us, you know, that are you know Ghanaian and Liberian and Zimbabwean to tell, put put that out, to tell the amazing side, show that side yeah. of your country, and like highlight it. Yeah, and also too, if I could add to that, Ugo, I think, of course, um, you know. My friend, my friend used to joke. He would be like, he used to think that they would pay the flies to be in the videos because it would be the same fly, same size, same they color, every video. They, and this perception, and Malcolm X said it best. There's nobody that said it better than Malcolm X, and he said, in this in this country, in this world, whoever controls the media controls the perception. They have the ability to paint you as the most pious person. The uh, you know, the, the greatest person, or they have the ability to taint your image like that. And we see it happen all the time with whether influencers, celebrities, or whatever it might be. You know, they might be living a good life now, and somebody might go and pick up a small little thing they said when they were ignorant and a child and hey, tear their whole career yeah, down yeah, and have no remorse for hey, it. Yeah, right? So That's I think, like, to that point that you just mentioned, 
representation is very, very, very important. And we need to tell our stories the way that they need to be told. And if you're telling, here's the thing. If I come into your house and let's take the house, or no, let's just say if I come into your country, right? Let's take the country that you own as an operating system for your phone. So iOS. Okay, now I come into your house. Let's take the house as an app, right? right. And I come into your house in your country. And right. I say, this is what we want. We're, we need to be represented. You go, right. one, in this is country. in your house. This is in isn't your house. constitution. This is in your source code, nothing. You want to tell us what to do? Then they shut you down. That's right. all we're saying. We're saying we have the skill sets now more than ever. Let's keep it real. I love Black Panther. But they only did it now because it's high, Africa's highly uh, uh, profitable. profitable right now. Let's keep it yeah. real. They made it's a highly profitable. $2.8 billion. <laughs> and they didn't even go to Africa. They made $2.8 billion using Africa to market, using African culture, African beads, and African names. They didn't even go to Africa. They didn't even give us African name, but they made almost $3 billion. It's appropriation. Mm -hmm. There's this, somebody just quoted this uh, a comment that I think is so iconic. This person said, the, re the revolution shall be Instagramized. <laughs> Instagramized. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yo, but for real. So I can't see the comments. Oh, you can't? Like, that's no, so interesting. Um, do you want me to, uh, like, exit and then bring you back in? Maybe. Let me show Probably. Okay, let, let's try that real quick. Let's do that real quick, should I say Yo, I'm I'm loving this. I'm thankful to everybody. You know, my glasses coming out. I'm so thankful to everybody that's in this stream right now. I feel like we just have so much energy uh, flowing through here. Let me bring Ugo back in. Can you see it now? Yeah, we back on. You can see it? Yeah, we back. Hey, it's lit. No, but the rest was like anything. Instagramized. But that's the thing. So even as we start thinking about you know, one thing that I've, I, and, I, and I took this pill and I swallowed it before people even, you know, wanted to, you know, swallow it. And, you know, the, and that was the pill of understanding that platforms should not be forced, nor is it their duty to confine based off of society or, de or demographic motives, right? By that, I mean, Twitter was not built for politics. It wasn't. Instagram was not built for Instagram lives during COVID-19. It really wasn't. So even when people come out, I, and I agree with them, I'm the first man, before before people started talking about, I was one of the first people to get up and be like, no, we're not doing this anymore. You know, at a time where it wasn't cool or at a time where I, you know, at a time where I had to rely on partnerships and, you know, I was working with Apple, I was working with Facebook, so I couldn't openly, but I was still taking those chances in, 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 in saying these things. So I think in the same capacity, like with everything that's happening right now, Instagram isn't going to go, you know, change their algorithm because it needs to make money for the business. And that's the unfortunate reality of how things work. You know what I mean? Um, you, every single user on a social media platform counts or can be literally converted into a micro fraction of stock. Remember when Snapchat had said that thing about Chris Brown and Rihanna, and she said something, and they lost, like, their stock dropped by 15%. Oh, Snapchat, right? Yeah. They almost lost the whole company. Yeah. They almost shut <laughs> the whole company down. Yo, shout out to my bro Omarion for joining. You know, hope you're really yo. enjoying this. Shout out to Leah. Oh, oh the homie. Um, and bro, like, I think it's it's so important that we're even having this dialogue, man, for, for people to know that it's possible. Like, even for me, last year or earlier this year, I went on Twitter and was just, like, telling people, because people were, like, they were telling me, they were, like, oh, it's cool that you get to be with Uber and Snapchat and blah, 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 but have you actually done any work here? Have you actually, or they were, like, um, have you, um, people were asking me, like, have you 